Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jeannie and I picked up some new colors from Manny Boss during her Black Friday sale and they gave me total winter vibes. So we're gonna do a winter themed Manny with some sugared nail art. I'll also be using Manny Boss dip liquids, which these bottles are almost out, but good thing I picked up a backup set of bottles in the Black Friday sale. I'm going to be starting with Chill Out, which I believe is from her release last year. And I don't even know why I didn't pick it up because it is this gorgeous baby blue with just the slightest amount of shimmer. And it is just so pretty. I know I was eyeing it. I don't believe I picked it up. And I have a bad habit of not checking my colors before I buy new colors. So I might have another one sitting in a drawer somewhere. But either way, I'm still glad I picked this up and I'm finally using it. So you'll see when I dip with it, it is, since it's a lighter color, it is a sheerer color. So my normal dipping process is doing two dips of color and then capping in clear. So I stuck with that, but I could have easily done a third dip just to get it a little more opaque, but I kind of like the sheer look for this nail design that I'm doing. So I kind of went with that and left it a little bit sheerer at two dips, but even still, it's just a gorgeous color. This is going to be my regular dipping process, but I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what I'm doing instead of rambling about something random. But if you want to see a more in-depth beginner dipping video, let me know and I can put something together because I've been thinking about creating a series on that, but only if that's what you're interested in seeing. After I apply my layer of dip base, I'm carefully dipping my nail into the powder. You don't have to dip, you can pour over as well if you want to. I do like these Manny Boss dip liquids because they are thinner, so I have less chance of getting ledges, but you still want to be careful. And then after I dip, I am cleaning up my cuticle area with my precision tool. You always want to make sure you're not getting any excess product on your skin or else that will cause lifting. So I'm definitely not precise enough to not have to do a little bit of cleanup afterwards, but you don't have to use a precision tool. You can use a toothpick, which is what I used when I first started dipping. You can use an orange wood stick or even like the skinny end of a dotting tool, but there are different things you can use. So you definitely don't have to have a precision tool. In between layers, you always want to dust off your excess powder and I do that off camera because I usually either do it in my dust collector or in my trash can depending on how lazy I am just because I don't want my area to get super dusty. So once I've dusted that off, I'm going to go in with my second layer of color. So I'm just applying a thin even layer of dip base to my entire nail. And once I've got that fully covered, I'm going to dip my nail into that powder. And again, you don't have to dip. You can also pour over if that's your preferred method and you will get thinner layers with pour over method. And I would say, you know, for me, my preference is two layers of color and then capping in clear. But if you're wearing your nails for longevity, so if you're wearing it for more than a couple days, if you have thin layers, like the Manny Boss dip liquids are thin, the powders are thin, so this Manny is pretty thin, you probably want to do more layers of the color because the thinner it is, the more prone you are to cracking. But because I only wear my nails for a couple days at most, I don't really worry about that and I just stick with two layers. So just keep that in mind. If you experience cracking, you, you may need more layers of powder. Also make sure you have enough activator. So either your activator could be going bad or you don't have enough layers. I know I go a little overboard with activator, but I like to be safer rather than sorry. So I do like two to three layers of activator before I file and buff my nails just to ensure that they're properly cured and they're not going to flake off or chip on me. I go a little slower with my second layer of dip base because I want to make sure I'm covering my entire nail. So the first layer after I dust off the excess powder, I find a lot of times I've missed like a little spot on the sidewalls or whatever it is. So I want to make sure I'm taking my time and covering my full nail. That way I can stick to the two layers, but I can do a third if needed. I just prefer not to if I can help it. So now I'm going to move on to Florius and wait till you see this dip. I mean, wow, it is such a beautiful glitter. You see me tapping the jar here because this is actually a different texture to most dips. So I'd say it's 
I guess clumpier although I don't mean that in a bad way I don't mean to sound bad so it's kind of a wetter mixture so it's not very light and fluffy I guess I don't know really how to describe it besides saying that it's clumpier but not in a bad way but there are some things to note about kind of this consistency of dip powder I don't think it'd be good for like an ombre if you're doing tap ombre method because you're not really going to get that good sprinkle because it's clumpier and I would say I don't think it'd be really good for pour over method as well so I would say you would either need to dip into this color or you could kind of lay into it like lay your fingernail flat into it and that could help as well. And then I do want to make sure I'm pressing it down after I dip just to make sure I'm getting enough coverage. But you know what? It wasn't difficult to work with. It was just a little different to work with, but so, so beautiful. I mean, when you see it top coated, just wow. I absolutely love this dip. And actually the texture kind of reminds me of like, you know that texture of like fake snow? I don't know, does that make any sense? But anyway, it is beautiful. Now that I've got two dips on all my nails, I'm going to go ahead and cap them in clear using the Manny Boss Clear. Now, capping in clear is part of my normal process. I do it on all my manis, on all my colors, and there's a couple reasons why. And the first one being, I don't want to accidentally file through any of my dips. So regardless of whether it's a solid, shimmer, glitter, I always cap in clear. And I know there are others out there who like to just not cap in clear for their solids and just do an extra dip or two of the solid. I prefer using clear, so whatever your preference is, I just don't wanna risk my solids becoming splotchy, but you definitely wanna cap in clear for your glitters because you don't wanna accidentally file through them. So if it's a colored glitter, more than likely if you file through it, you're gonna start seeing silver. So you're gonna file off the color and you may dull the glitter as well if you file through it. So make sure you're capping your glitters in clear. So that's just part of my normal process as well as 
clear acrylic is the strongest so it's going to add strength to your mani so that's really my preference and if you don't like clear dip powder you could also cap your nails in either gel base and gel top coat or you could even use clear builder gel so whatever your preference is depending on whether you prefer gels or whether you prefer dip powder but i always suggest encapsulating your nails Actually, on that note of gels, if you're using gel method for your dip powder, so you're not using dip liquids, you're using gel base instead, I would not suggest capping in clear because gel does not play nicely with clear dip powder. So if you're using gel method, I would definitely encapsulate with either your gel base and gel top coat or clear builder gel. You may or may not have noticed, but I actually capped my blue shimmer nails first before I'm moving on to my glitter nails. And that's because I could accidentally pick up some glitters in my dip base brush when I'm applying my dip base. So I don't want to accidentally contaminate my shimmer nails with any of those loose glitters. So that's why I'm kind of doing it in the order of color. So I'm starting with my blue nails and then I'm doing my glitter nails. I also like to pat down my clear after I dip my nail in it and that's just to make sure that it gets into like all the crevices of the glitter. You don't have to do it but I kind of feel like it helps with like the smoothness of the glitter. Not that this one's chunky at all but that's just my personal preference. But I will say if you do press down with your finger you could get dip base and powder stuck to your finger which you'll have to gently buff off. So if you don't like that you can get a little baggie and put that on your finger and use that to press down with but I'm just way too lazy to do that. After my clear is fully dry I'm going to give it a good scrub with a stiff scrub brush and this is going to remove any of the excess powder and help with any graininess or cloudiness. So once that's done, I'm gonna go in with my activator and I'm gonna apply a generous amount of activator just cause I don't wanna accidentally file through anything and I'd rather be safe rather than sorry as I kind of mentioned in the beginning of the video. Flurious isn't a super chunky glitter. So for the most part, my nails are pretty smooth. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply my generous layer of activator and then I'm just, when it gets to that point of it's a little bit dry, so it's not sticky, but it's not completely dry, I'm just going to take my fingers and press it down just to smooth it out a little bit more, just to make filing a little bit easier. So I'm going to do the same thing to my thumb as well. So I'm going to file and buff off camera, and then I'll be back for some sugared nail art. Now I'm back, I've got my filing and buffing done and it didn't take that much time at all. I'm actually gonna go ahead and top coat my nails that aren't gonna have any sugared art on them. So my ring finger, pinky, and thumb, those are done. So I wanna go ahead and get those out of the way. So I'm gonna apply my last layer of activator. I only do one layer of activator. I'll wait two minutes and then I'm gonna apply my dip top coat to those.
I want to do my nail art over matte nails. So I'm going to use my Manny Boss gel base coat and matte gel top coat. So what I'm going to do first is apply a thin even layer of gel base coat to my two nails. And the reason I use gel base coat first is because I filed and buffed my nails so they're super smooth. So the matte top coat needs something to adhere to or else it could potentially peel off. And because gel base leaves a sticky layer, that's that layer of adherence that the top coat needs. So I definitely recommend before you use any kind of gel top coat on dip nails that you use a layer of gel base coat first. So once I've got that done, I will cure in my 48 watt UV LED lamp, which you see up there. This is my bell lamp that I got from Amazon. I'll leave the link down below in the description and I'm gonna cure for 30 seconds. Matte top coat can be kind of tricky to work with because it does show any imperfections and not only does it show them, it highlights them as well as matte top coat can be streaky. So you want to be really careful with matte top coat. So when you're buffing your nail, you want to make sure your nails are super smooth. There aren't any ridges or bumps or anything like that because you don't want those highlighted by the matte top coat. It's similar that way to chrome, right? Because when you're using chrome, your nails need to be as smooth as possible or else you will see it with a chrome. Same with matte top coat. And then I'll say as well, matte top coat isn't as self-leveling as your glossy gel top coat. So you always wanna make sure your layers are thin and they're even, and you wanna take your time and be very careful when you're applying it, just so you don't get that streakiness that the matte top coat can give you. And then once you're done, give it time to level. You know, don't just put your hand in the lamp right away. Give it a little time to level first, before you cure it. I know I've said it before, but I'm not a huge fan of matte nails and it's really a texture thing for me. There's something about the texture that bothers me, but sometimes it's just looks better on a mani and i'll also say matte top coat stains really easily so as someone with purple hair take it from me your matte top coat will stain so any dirt any hair dye you'll see it for my nail art i'm going to use my eye gel line art gel in white is white and i'm using white because i want the art to stand out against the light blue nail so i'm just taking a little bit of that gel and i'm going to place it on my palette here and then I'll be using this five millimeter liner brush from the Painted Desert, which I've been loving to use lately. So I wanna keep my hand as steady as possible. And what I decided to do on my middle finger is to draw icicles and sugar them. So I'm just, and this is the great thing because they don't have to be straight lines, which thank goodness, because I have the hardest time with straight lines. So I'm just kind of drawing kind of like an icicle looking shape, just kind of adding some bends here and there because you don't want it to look perfect. So it's going to be a little bit thicker at the top and then it's going to kind of taper off into more of a point at the bottom. And obviously I don't want them to be like the same length. So I'm going to do them like all different lengths going across the top of my nail. So I don't want to use too much gel. So I'm just being very careful. So at first I'm just drawing those icicles down from my nail, but we'll tie them all together once I've got those icicles drawn in. If you've ever done like blood drip nail art, this is a very similar process. The only difference is you're not using dots because the icicles are kind of straight lines, kind of more pointy rather than the dots. So I'm just starting from my cuticle line and drawing my icicle downwards, except it doesn't have to be straight lines, which is really great for me because I am using my non-dominant hand to draw this. So it's okay if it's shaky. So that's what I kind of loved about doing these icicles is it didn't matter they could be imperfect because no icicles are perfect so once i'm done filling in those icicles i'm just going to go at the top and fill in that cuticle line so i don't want them to be just coming out of a straight line so i'm just kind of filling it in to where it looks like kind of snow is falling where it's kind of 
joining where the icicle is. It's really hard to describe. I'm, I'm figuring out, but hopefully I'm making sense. So I don't want just the icicle coming out of the straight line. I'm kind of drawing like curves to where it meets the icicle to make it look a little more natural looking. Before I cure my gel, I'm going to pour over Snow Way because this glitter is so pretty and it reminds me of snow and I thought it would make a really good sugared look for this. So I'm going to cure it for 60 seconds once I'm done. Once I'm done with my liner brush to clean it out, I'm going to be using some gel top coat. So I'm going to place a little bit of that on the palette and I'm going to run my brush through there and wipe it against the palette until it runs clear and that way it's not going to dry out my bristles. If you're using acetone or alcohol to clean out your brush, it's going to dry out your bristles, which could cause um, splitting of your brush. So you always want to be careful when you're handling your brush. And then you can wipe off any of that excess gel on a lint-free wipe. And then once you're done, you can store it that way and that'll keep your brush in good condition. For my index finger, I'm going to be using my 12 millimeter liner brush because I want a little bit of a longer brush because I don't know why I decided I was going to try to draw a snowflake and a snowflake is hard enough without trying to do it on your dominant hand. So I don't know what I was thinking. And I kind of left a little bit of this in here because I was going to do a snowflake in the middle of my nail. So I started with a line in the middle of my nail and then once I flipped my finger, it was not centered. I, for the life of me, cannot find the center of my nail. Like I swear I found it and I draw it. And then as soon as I flip my nail, it is just not centered. So if you find that, that's the great part about gel. If you didn't cure it, you could just wipe it away with some alcohol. So literally, I think I tried four or five times to find the center of my nail. And you'll see I gave up because I was like, I, it's just not working. So let's figure out something that will work. I'm not gonna lie, at this point I was a little frustrated. So I grabbed my Idle Chaos because I wanted a larger surface to hold my hand steady. And then I decided I was gonna draw the snowflake in the top left corner of my nail, rather than trying to find that stupid center of my nail, which I couldn't seem to find that day or any day for that matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw, kind. I'm starting with a cross in that center. And I wanted to do a different kind of snowflake than I did with my other Manny. So I did a dot snowflake with my Manny that I did for the Sassy Mouth and Marla Chris Knock and Boots collab collection. So I wanted to do a little bit something different. So I actually Googled snowflakes to see what I might be able to do. And then you'll see here, I went a little bit too over, like further than I wanted to be. So I'm just taking that lint-free wipe with a little bit of alcohol and wiping that off. I am so sorry, but I had to cut some footage out because I went out of frame because it was just so hard to try to do this with my non-dominant hand. I don't know what I was thinking, but to kind of catch you up. So once I had that cross complete, I kind of did diagonal lines through the cross. And so now what I'm doing is I want to connect those lines together. So I'm just drawing a triangle to connect those lines and it looks easy. Let me tell you, it was not easy to do. I think I would have had a better time obviously with my dominant hand, but 
that's all right. I got through it. So I'm just extending the lines a little bit if I need to. I want to make sure that everything is connected. Uh, it's not the smoothest lines or straightest lines, but because I'm sugaring it, I think it kind of camouflages the imperfections of the lines, so I think that's okay. I just want to make sure that I'm getting, like I don't want those lines, the initial lines that I did, to be hidden. I want them to extend past where I connect them. So that's what I'm doing here. And then from the, the end of those lines, I'm just kind of branching them out. So uh, <laughs> in here, okay, so I didn't like the way that looked, so I'm going to wipe it off very carefully with a lint-free wipe and some alcohol, and then I will try again. So it'll dry really quickly. The isopropyl alcohol dries really quickly. And then you wanna kind of branch off. So just making three lines from that end line, I guess, is what I'm doing. So I hope that makes sense. This is really hard to explain, or I'm just really bad at explaining things. Now that everything's done, fully cured and cooled off, I'm gonna finish off my mani using my Candy Skin Care Cuticle Candy. So this is in the scent Sugar Cookie, which is a release from her last year holiday, I believe. And I absolutely love this scent and I'll be so sad when it's gone. So I wanna make sure I'm getting my cuticles and I also wanna make sure I'm getting underneath my nails as well, cause those really get dry during the manicure process. And here we are with the finished look. What do you think? If you're still with me, thanks for hanging in there. I know it was a bit of a longer process, but I wanted to be able to explain and show you what I was doing. So these colors, they just scream winter to me. So I'm so glad I picked them up and I just cannot get over how beautiful Flurious and Snow Way is. So Flurious is the one that's on my ring finger and thumb and is just such a beautiful glitter. So don't let the texture of it concern you. It's super easy to use and it is just so, so beautiful. I cannot stop staring at it and believe it or not, I am still wearing it. And then Snow Way just made like the perfect glitter for sugaring. It did, you know, it was a good name because it did remind me of snow. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this. And it also helps YouTube recommend me to others. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.